interesting context for where the birth of blues with Budweiser advertising came from. First of all, the ad agency uh, that I was at, Darcy in St. Louis, made great use of music for a long time. Uh, throughout the 70s, when you say Budweiser, you said it all. Very powerful melody, jingle, we called it back then. Um, and so there, there was a lot of music in the brand personality, number one. Number two, uh, long about 1977, I hired Lou Rawls to be the national spokesperson for Budweiser. Now this is the first black guy that, I, as far as I know, from a major general market brand, was hired to be the spokesperson. So, you know, the agency gets great credit for the idea. Anheuser-Busch certainly gets great credit for that courage. So. Shortly after that, this young black writer comes to my office. He's written this piece that he calls kind of half dialogue and half singing. And he's written it in the genre of Johnny Guitar Watson. Now, before that, we did music versions for radio. We had a lot of radio that we invested in. But we always hired studio musicians and session players to do it in a their studio up in New York or out in LA. So this kid comes to me with this piece he's written called Bustin' Bud Suds, I'll never forget it. He's a sweet guy named Roland Harris. And he says, I want it to sound like Johnny Guitar Watson. And so I say, you know what? Why don't we just hire Johnny Guitar Watson? And we did. And so he does this piece in a very genuine fashion. He appears at the next Anheuser-Busch convention. And it kind of set the precedent in that broader context for hiring real musicians. All right, next. We launched this Buds For You, historically phenomenal campaign in 1979, and we need more music. Well, now I'm saying let's not get studio arrangements of all this stuff for each segment, particularly the blues and R&B. Let's get real recording artists. So off we go. B.B. King, Rick James, War, Bootsy Collins, on and on. I mean, that, that was the early versions of those music pieces. Well, what we were after and what, what was so critical to Budweiser's brand personality was an emotional connection. Beer is an image product. I mean, you can talk all day long about Beechwood aging or whatever. Those are rationales. Beer is an image product that needs to make a genuine emotional connection with beer drinkers. Well, having grown up on blues and played it since I was 13, um, I, th I think I had a pretty good instinct for the emotional connection that music was capable of. And so we started getting all these real artists, and we insisted on no cell copy, no voiceover, you know, uh, advertising cell words, simply the music. And what we did was we, we had the first bit, we insisted on the melody, for all you do this, Bud's for you. We wanted the artist to end it with that. And in the middle, a lot of them just jammed. So some of them were smart enough to jam with about, you know, with something that was their next release or whatever because they were going to have huge airplay. The other thing that was so amazing about what we did was we did instrumental versions of a lot of these things. We, played, we went on air with instrumental only versions of a lot of these uh, recordings from all these artists. Well, I got a two minute version of B.B. King's For All You Do This Buds For You. It's like amazing. If you really are in it and understand it, man, it can heal your heart. It can jack you up. It's, it's like, well, it's life. 